Let's try that again. Can that be everyone? All right, very good. Well, I want to welcome you uh, this afternoon. We have a very special guest speaker. How many of you remember hearing from Dr. Moore before? Yeah, well, let me introduce her and share a little bit about her for those of you that don't know her. Uh, Dr. Moore directs the Laurel School Center for Research on Girls and writes an adolescent column for the New York Times called Motherload Law. She serves a, as a faculty associate at the Schubert Center for Child Studies and a clinical instructor in the Department of Psychological Services at Case Western Reserve University. Dr. DeMore maintains a private psychotherapy practice and also consults and speaks internationally. She is the author of numerous academic papers, chapters, and books related to education and child development. But most importantly, she's just had a brand new book that's come out called Untangled, Guiding Teenage Girls Through the Seven Transitions into Adulthood. And we're very excited for her because when she first came here, she was talking about maybe writing the book, and now it's done. And it's actually, uh, as of last week, I think it was number seven on the New York Times bestsellers list. So we're very excited to welcome Dr. DeMore back to Stewart, and I know you'll give her a nice warm welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you for having me back. Uh, I am so glad to see you guys again, and I will tell you, don't tell anybody my favorite part is meeting with the girls. I'll also meet with your faculty and your parents, but this for me is the highlight, is getting to see you guys again. Um, so, some of you I talked to, I was looking at my list, I think it was November 2013, was when I was last with you guys. And so some of you, who was not at Stuart, November 2013, a lot of you probably knew to the school. And are you eighth grade? Ninth, okay, so a lot of you came in as ninth graders, okay. Um, so first, uh, there's a, a topic for us to think about together, but then there's something I want to tell you first and I'm gonna ask you about it at the end, okay? I'm going to talk to your faculty after school, and then I'm going to talk to parents tonight. Does anybody know if their parents are planning to come? Some maybe yes, no, who knows, who knows? You don't keep their schedules. Why would you know this thing, right? Um, and I'm going to talk to them about my book. And, and I would say the entire point of my book is to help parents better understand their daughters. And in my book is about normal and healthy development and all that comes with it. And, and my goal is I think there's often a lot of misunderstanding between parents and teenage girls, and my goal is to try to be somebody who bridges that gap a little bit. So I know we only go till 3.10, and I'm gonna stop at 3.05, which isn't too far from now, and I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want you to have some time to think about it before I ask, which is, what do you want me to tell the parents tonight? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to hear from you? And the nice thing is I don't know your names, right? So I'm not gonna be like, oh, and then Molly in the 10th grade said, right? And I, well, I can't do that, I won't do that. I just made up the name. Is there a Molly in the 10th grade? No. no okay. <laughs> um, so I want you to think about that. You know, where are the gaps and the misunderstandings between you guys and your folks? You know, where do they not always see where you're coming from? And, and how can I, in my time together with them tonight, say a little bit to help them better understand you guys and, and what it's like to be a teenager? Okay, so you guys think about that, I'm gonna ask. So let me do, this is perfect actually, that some of you I've seen before and some of you are new, because my plan was to recap what we talked about before. And I, I have my key notes of everywhere I've been, so I remember what we talked about before. Does anybody, what do you guys remember of what we talked about? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, like sleeping. Uh -oh. Absolutely, that was one of our topics. Anything else? Yeah. I am so impressed. I remember we said showers. Showers, exactly. Showers are key to the process. Yes. Okay, you're falling to electronics in the room or something like that. This is amazing. You guys are amazing. Okay, this, yes, 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 yes. So let me give a quick recap for the girls who were not here. And then, what we're going to talk about, and this will happily include everybody, are all of the things that we know about reducing stress, and then what gets in the way of us actually doing the things that we know reduce stress, right? Yeah, go school. <laughs> we can just stop right there, right? We don't even have to have the whole school, I'm probably not, right? Yeah, okay. All right, well, we're done. We're good. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit, like kind of a recap on all of the things that we know reduce stress. So stress comes with the territory of being human. 
And it definitely comes with the territory of being a teenager, right? I mean, you guys know that we ask a huge amount of you. And some days, I think we ask too much, right? And then there's some days where you're like, this is past the point where it's helpful, right? Hopefully not every day, hopefully not too often. And I will tell you, and, and this is something I, I feel almost apologetic about, but not quite. It's part of our jobs to ask a lot of you, right? And then here's how I want you guys to think about it. Think about a fifth grader, right? And they're still tiny, and they're still learning so much. And think about a 12th grader, right? Where are the 12th graders? Right? Woo! So amazing, <laughs> so ready to go out into the world, right? Most days. And think about how little time happens between fifth and 12th grade and how much growth has to happen in that space. And how, you know, I mean, you would never send a fifth grader off to college, right? She's got a lot to learn before she's ready to go to college. And it's almost like we have to get you up a hill. You have to learn a huge amount. You have to get better taking care of yourself. You have to be able to deal with emotional things. And we can't get you up that hill if things aren't hard, right? Part of you guys gaining that strength is dealing with hard things. So I've actually kind of become used to the idea that girls, our job is actually to stress you a bit. Not too much, not every day, not to a breaking point. But to give you things that you've not done before and help you get through them, to ask more of you than we've asked of you in the past so that you can grow to be able to do it. So that you can go being, from being a fifth grade girl who does assignments with help to being a girl who's on her way to college who can read for three hours without anybody supervising her. Right, and that's a lot of growth and it takes a lot of stress to get there. So stress comes with the territory. We cannot make it go away. And actually, increasingly, I'm aware we don't want to make it go away. Like, that's our, that's our job, to help you guys grow. And stress helps grow. But it's your job to be able to work with us and not become overwhelmed. And it's our job to help you not become overwhelmed. Because too much stress isn't helpful, right? Too much stress may collapse. So what we talked about before are some of the things that can help you manage stress. So one of them, do you guys remember the term growth mindset? Right, that idea of feeling like your brain is like a muscle. When you come across hard work, you know, you can think, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I don't know how to do this. Or you can think, okay, this is like a weight that I can't quite lift. If I start slow and I lift it, my muscle will get stronger. And then I can take a heavier weight and I can keep getting stronger. So if instead of weights, we talk about math problems. Okay, I can't do this math problem, but I can do a lighter math problem. I'll build up my muscles on that and I'll move on to the harder problems. And if we think about our brain seeing like a muscle, we can feel better in the face of challenge. We don't feel as stressed, we feel like we can do it, we can make it happen. Okay, you're like, yeah, we're mindset, sure. That idea that if you try, you can get better at stuff. That's, like, it's a plausible idea. Okay. What I can tell you as somebody who has long read and thought and talked about growth mindset is, I absolutely agree with that idea in theory. There are days where it does not work for me. Right? Where somehow that way of thinking doesn't help me feel better or doesn't help me accomplish things. Do you guys know what I mean? So that's what I want to talk about a little bit more today. What gets in the way? Right? So the idea is, look, you can get better at anything with effort and that should inspire you. What gets in the way of it really feeling that way sometimes? Can you guys give me examples? Or times when it just doesn't feel like it works that way? Yeah. The grades you get. Okay, right? Grades and growth mindset aren't actually very good friends, right? Because grades is like, oh, yes, I mean, well, growth mindset is like, you're amazing, you can become anything. Grades are like, you're a big menace, right? I mean, you know, like they just, they're very flat and fixed. Okay, so you're absolutely right that adults talk about growth mindset, we talk about all this potential and all this try and try again, and yet we also at the exact same time turn around and get grades. Right, that are about end of story, done deal. And, and I think that one of the things I try to grapple with very openly as an adult who cares for girls are the ways in which we are constantly both arsonists and firemen. You know, where we're like firemen and we're saying, don't be stressed, just think about the process. And arsonists, when we're like, and here's your B minus. Right? <laughs> and we sort of take with one hand and give with the other. Right? And we do this. I absolutely agree. What else gets in the way of the growth mindset? The sense that like you can do it anything, yeah. Deadlines, awesome, right? Because growth mindset is eventually you will get there. Deadline is, but you do not have time, <laughs> right? Right, absolutely, absolutely. Does it leave you guys feeling like the grownups are kind of full of it sometimes, right? Like the what's that? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> because we say all of these things, and yet we have crazy deadlines that don't match those things. That would be a fair assessment. Other things that get in this way of a sense that, like, I can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Striving for perfection. That is gorgeous. 
right? It's saying, I'm going to meander and hammer away at this, and it might be really ugly for a while. And yet, there's not a school in the world that doesn't love the perfect paper, right? And doesn't love the polished, finished product. And I think what we struggle with so much in schools is that school is not set up necessarily, any school is not set up in a growth mindset way. You know, growth mindset takes time, takes away deadlines, takes away grades, takes away perfection, and yet we, our schools, we have deadlines and grades and we love perfection. So you're right, you're absolutely right. Other places where you feel like, yeah, it gets in the way. Okay, that people have expectations and maybe high expectations, right? So we might say, this is great, we love risks, we love loss, we love mistakes. What happened on this assignment? Right? And you're be saying these two things side by side. And I also know that girls more than boys, you know our expectations even if we don't say them. You know what I mean? And, and I will tell you, my husband works in an all boys school. and. To communicate to the boys that things aren't going well, they have to be very loud and clear and specific about what's not going well for the boys. And I know that for you guys, do you guys just look at the adults' faces and the looks on our faces and know how we're feeling about how things are going? Yeah. And I have to tell you, I don't think we even notice how powerful that message is and how much we use it. But I, I think that you guys are very tuned in and we have helped you become tuned in to when we're saying, take risks, this is fabulous, and then you give us something and we're like, hmm, right? And just that little look and that disappointment seems to undermine everything we've said about how we want it to be messy. Okay, so this is kind of depressing, right? When we think about it, right? We're saying all these wonderful things about the importance of growth mindset, and yet the day to day of school doesn't always support that. Can you guys think of places in your education? or on the sports field, or in your music, or somewhere where you feel like, this is where the growth mindset idea works, where I'm allowed and I have time and I have space to get better at a pace that feels doable. Do you guys have coaches or teachers or places where you got, you got room for that? No? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so going to the library. And are you going there for things of your own interest sometimes? Yeah. Okay, so it may in some ways be in your hobbies. I will tell you where I'm most growth mindset is in my knitting, right? Which I do not have deadlines for. I do, you know, it's for myself and for whoever I happen to give a gift for. And the nice thing about knitting, honestly, people are so pleased to get a handmade thing that they don't care if it's actually kind of messy. Like, that's kind of like charming, because it's obviously handmade. I know there are knitters here. Awesome, right? And so knitting is a great growth mindset thing, but again, no grades, no deadlines, nothing like that. Are there other places? I mean, do you have coaches where you feel like they have really stood by you as you got better slowly? Or have helped you? Have you watched yourself get better slowly, even without a coach's help? And do you feel like that's a place where you can see effort and outcome tying together? How about in a class? Where are the classes where you feel like Grades aside, deadlines aside, expectations aside, I've watched myself get smarter. Can anybody say there's a class where they've seen that happen? Yeah? What, what class are you thinking of? English. In English? Where you've seen gradual improvement because of what you've done. Okay. What's your thought? Yeah? Also English. Okay. Is there something that the teacher does in particular, or is that just a class that seems to lend itself to it? Um. Necessarily do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. Other classes or places where you feel like I got better. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so you took film. So you started out knowing nothing, which is a great place to start, right? Because you're only going up, right? And then by the end, you made a film. And did you like how it came out? Yeah. It was cool. Okay. Other places where you feel like Grades aside, deadlines aside, everything else aside, yeah. Our Spanish class, yeah, that's your class. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like we've gotten to know a lot more about like cultures of different countries too and different parts of the language. And it's crazy to think like from lower schools now how much we've all been 
uh, places where there's some room to play. But you know, and sometimes you know, the creative stuff or writing in new ways gives you a little more room as opposed to sometimes the more you know, boom, 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 boom parts of school. But you're also saying something really important, which is growth mindset. Sometimes you can see it over years, right? I mean, I think that that's the part that's hard, is that um, assignment to assignment, you feel like, man, I didn't get a chance to get my hands around that, and you're already giving me a break. But it's helpful, right, to think, OK, you're pretty much fluent in Spanish, and in fifth grade, you were doing the colors, and that was that, right? And, and that's, that's a place where I, I hope you guys can admire your own efforts. So here's what I want you guys to think about, and then we're going to move on to sleep, of course, right? My favorite topic on the planet. Um, these two ideas can live side by side, right? We cannot, unfortunately, get rid of grades and deadlines, and even admiring work that's really gorgeous on the first try. Like, schools are schools. Even as the adults continue to carry out this kind of old-fashioned and entrenched way of doing school, you guys, through your own creativity and your own observation, can still watch yourself grow. Watch yourself grow from knowing nothing to knowing a lot. Take pleasure in that. And also, I hope, on your own time, that you're teaching yourself something. Right? Whether it's the library, for me, it's knitting. What are you guys teaching yourself on your own time? Nothing to do with school, just for your own self. Yeah? Art. Art? How do you do it? Right? And then you pull up your driveway, 
and then you walk in your house, and your body is like, ten, 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 right away. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like that instantaneous, like if somebody blocked you from the bathroom at that point, it would be ugly, right? <laughs> this is because your body knows the pattern. And your body knows, and I always tell it the same way, that hopefully you do not relieve yourself in your car, right? And hopefully you don't do it on your driveway. But when you get in your house, your body recognizes the light and the smell and the feel and says, this is where we do this. Let's do it. And it's powerful. And, and the reason I love that example, I think for most of us, we know exactly what that's like. But it also reminds us, we're not in charge. You know, we think we're in charge. We're not in charge. Like, our body has the score, and it's keeping the score, and it actually wants to play according to its score. So when you go to bed, what you want, <coughs> ideally, is that the only thing associated with your bed is falling asleep. So that when you get in, you know how your sheets feel, and you know how your blankets feel, and you know how your pillow feels, you know how specific those things are? Like when you go to a hotel, it's really hard to sleep because you don't have all your stuff at the right weight and feel. Um, what we want is that our body goes, oh, oh, this feeling, oh yeah, this is always associated with sleep, and then it falls right asleep. And what happens is when we use our beds for lots of things besides sleeping, when we use it for our phones, when we use it for our homework, when we use it to do all sorts of things, then we get into our bed and everybody's like, so are we going to play computer? What's the score? Like, what are we going to do, right? And what we want is for our body to say, oh, this, this is always associated with sleep, and then we fall right asleep. So if you keep yourself out of your bed, you should be able to fall asleep faster. Who here is having trouble falling asleep fast? You get in bed, but you can't sleep. A little bit, OK. Um, so you want to be really careful about this, because I know back to what you said about school, getting in the way. All schools are keeping students up with way too much homework. And we're going to fix that, not today. But what really I think is so unfortunate is when you guys are finally ready to go to sleep and then it can't happen. OK, so you all know this. Let's assume that a good chunk of you are still bringing your phones into your bedrooms and bringing the stuff that has the stuff in your bed and still playing on your phone late at night. What gets in the way? of doing what you know will protect your sleep. I mean, do you guys ever feel like, I know I'm not supposed to do this, and I'm totally doing it, even though it's going to keep me up? OK, what, what makes that happen? I mean, I have to do it. What, what gets in the way of watching out for your sleep? Yeah? Absolutely. So not only does it interfere with the habits, but the lights from phones and computers actually wake us up. Like they make us more fuzzy and awake. And you know that feeling like you're kind of super sleepy and then you check one more time and you're like, no, I'm kind of awake. Right? It's a biological thing. But I do this to myself every third night. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to bed. I'm just going to check email one more time. And then I, and then I'm wide awake. Why do I do this? I mean, I'm always out giving lectures about not doing this. What gets in the way for me? Yeah. Afraid to miss something? Yeah. Like this sense of like, I just need to see if something's there. What advice would you give me about not doing this to myself? Because I honestly, I do it to myself at times. <laughs> yeah. Are you stretching? OK. All right, so help me. Here, yes. Because you need some downtime. Like you want to play. 
right? And it becomes a very easy, convenient way to play. Um, can you guys, do any of you have something else that's sort of a fun little leisure? Even if you're supposed to be sleeping, your parents think you're sleeping. That feels good to you that doesn't involve technology. What do you have? Actually, you read? Okay, so you got, and do you have like sort of fun books? Sci-fi, okay, so those are your like fun. Yeah, thank you. You talk with yourself. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you let him then make up stories. That's awesome. Okay, we'll give you one more at the end. Yeah, at the end. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Like conversations with yourself. Okay, so here's I got two assignments for you guys before I see you next. One is I want you each to secretly teach yourself something, or not secretly. I want you to have your own growth mindset thing on your own time. Okay, some crazy thing, I mean skateboarding, I don't care, but something amazing that you're teaching yourself just to teach yourself. And then the other is, I want you to come up with a way to play at night when you are tired and need a little more fun that doesn't involve technology. Right, whether it's playing your mind, or reading, or getting at your old American Girl magazines, and looking at those games, those are awesome. Does anybody do that? No, no, <laughs> yes, no, whatever it is, yeah, you do, all right, or knitting, or something, um, I want you guys to do that, because I think that that starts to get at some of the more kids in the way, right, it's easy for me to suggest these things, hard to do, okay, I've got you guys for three more minutes, what do you want your folks to know, what should I tell the grown ups, that they just don't, let's see, yeah, be patient, <laughs> okay, you're hormonal and awful to people sometimes, and they need you to be patient. Okay, awesome. I will. I will. Yeah. Okay, so then check on you. Like, in your, if you go in your room and close the door, they need to see what's happening. So you guys, thank you for having me back. I'm very excited.